Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I am playing with some of my favorite art supplies and that is Posca paint pens on the gel plate. So I have done a previous video with Posca pens where I put them on the plate and then pulled them with a full flood of paint. Today I'm doing something totally different that I think you're really going to enjoy. And what's not to enjoy about all these fabulous colors? So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. Welcome to the studio. You can see that I've been playing. I've been playing a lot and having a lot of fun and figuring things out for this video today. So today I am experimenting once again with Posca acrylic paint markers on my gel plate. Um, I am using um, the PC7M size. Yes, the PC7M size. So the nibs are a bullet point, which means they're rounded and um, they're pretty chunky. So that's what I want so that I can make uh, bold marks on my plate. So all of them are that size. I've got um, a duplicate here. So I've got violet. I've got blue. I've got pink. I've got black. I've got light green. I've got orange and I've got green. Okay. So the links for all the products will be in the information box below the video. I'm also experimenting with spritzing and spraying golden high flow iridescent gold fine. High flow is very liquidy. It's got a metal ball in it like nail polish and you have to shake it until the ball is bouncing around in there. It's different from fluid acrylics. It's super liquidy. It's made for airbrushes, for spraying an airbrush. But despite the fact that it's made for spraying, you're going to want to wipe it off of this after you use it so it doesn't clog up. And what is this? This is part of this. It's a travel spray bottle, which conveniently has the same size and threading to fit on the top of this high flow. High flow usually has a cap that looks like Elmer's glue. This is how it comes. And I've retrofitted it with a spritzer. And every time I spritz it, I'm going to take a little damp paper towel and just sort of wipe the color out of there because it tends to clog. Um, and I've used this back and forth between a couple of colors and I just put it in water and spray water through it until the color stops coming through and then I can switch up colors. But I'm having the most fun with the gold. Um, you may like to experiment with other colors. Um, so I've also, I'm also using a ultra fine mist water sprayer because I'm going to spritz and dilute some of the markers for a different effect, especially the black, because the black is so bold and so solid that when I spray it, it bleeds out and softens the edge and it, it knocks it back a little bit, but all of them have a unique effect when you spray them versus when you don't. And we're going to talk about that. And last but not least, I am working on my Japanese sketch rice paper pad 9 by 12 because this paper is very durable and it can take a lot of water and it's very absorbent. So when I talk about spritzing and spraying, it's going to take that and it's going to soak it through the paper. And that's important because we're going to get some really interesting line quality when this paper absorbs the wet marker. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is a super simple stripe pattern. And I'm going to, I think, spritz a little bit of gold on the paper first. Here's what I found out through my experimenting. Working on a light colored solid as I normally do doesn't work as well because we want the marker to absorb and bleed and to grab into the paper. And when it has a layer of acrylic paint on it, it's not really doing that. So I'm working on white paper so that it can grab onto the surface of the paper and really absorb in and bleed out. And then I'm going to add color to the whole sheet after the fact to unify it. So that is a totally different way than I typically work. But 
it's always fun to try something new. And I hope this works because it's never fun to be on camera and have everything fail. But let's think positive thoughts. Okay, so I've also got a six inch brayer and I've got a bucket of clean water with a soft bristle brush and a microfiber cloth to wipe things up. But clearly that's not helping with my hands. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is a relatively simple stripe pattern, and I'm gonna use the pink and the blue and the purple. Now, when you're drawing on the plate, you can see that it has left some residual marks on my plate. Um, please don't get mad at me. I'm telling you in advance that this is gonna happen. It's gonna leave marks on your plate. Um, it doesn't matter. The plate still works. And I don't know about you, but all of my plates are dirty, if not with marker, with other paint residue and etc. So I do not have any pristine clean plates and they all still work just fine. Um, okay, so I am going to take uh, the blue and I'm just going to do some lines across. You can see with that bullet nib, I've got some nice thick pattern and I'm just going to do some some simple lines so that you can follow along with me before we get too complicated. And also if you don't know um, what to do. So now I'm going to take the mister and it sprays out a very fine light mist and that um, wets the marker. And then we're going to press it and you see how it's bleeding out and bleeding through. That's going to give us some interesting line quality. And because the paper is so absorbent, it's pulling all the way through and bleeding into it. So here you can see where it got really wet. Right here where it got really wet is very interesting. And you can also see that this indirect mark making has a line quality that is very different from directly drawing with the blue marker. Let me show you. So you can see that this has got some some evisceration, some soft edges. But when I draw straight on here with the blue marker, I get a very different line quality. I get a smooth edge, solid line. Whereas this is to me more visually interesting and also this stuff when you get it wet. So the more water on you put on it, the more bleedy blurry it's gonna get. Um, but you're definitely gonna get with indirect mark making, you're getting a really, to me, a more interesting line here than you do with directly using the marker with that smooth straight edge. Okay, so the next color I'm gonna use is the pink. And I'm gonna do the same thing. We could add some wiggle to the lines but for the most part. And we wanna make sure these markers are nice and juicy, so we're gonna activate them by pressing the nib down onto a piece of paper. Um, we're gonna press down like this, and that gets paint to flow into the tip. So we want them to be nice and juicy. So we're going to then, there we go. And we're gonna make some more lines, this time a little wiggly. And these lines are gonna overlap my blue. I'm gonna spritz this a little bit more with my fine mister, and we'll see if we get a different line quality here. So I'm gonna press that, that's the pink. And we're gonna pull that up. And sometimes I'll just flip it over and see if there's any left that I can grab on in the opposite direction. So you can see the pink is soft edged and um, bleeding a little bit. We could have sprayed it more. Um, I love that. Okay, so the purple is next. And I, in keeping with the horizontal lines, just to keep our first pattern simple. Also, you don't have to cover all of the plate. You can just do a few like that. And again, spritzing and printing. Really nice. Look at that. So I could have even added more water. It's not bleeding as much as I thought it would. So I'm gonna do one more with the pink. I'm gonna go try to visually put these lines on the plate where they might end up on the paper. Maybe we could even put a little orange in there. And spray. Okay, I gave it a double spray that time. Oh yeah, you can see that's more wet. There. 
Beautiful. My orange intersected with my purple and made an interesting brown. What were the odds of that, that they were gonna line up perfectly? So we've got some really nice, soft, watery line quality here with indirect mark making, especially this right here. I think the darker colors bleed a little bit more, but you have to experiment with the amount of water. So I'm gonna set this aside and let this dry a bit. And then I'm gonna do a second one. If you've made it this far in the video, you're doing great. Be sure to stay to the end because I'm gonna fan out all the papers for you so you can see the total fruits of our labor. And while I have your attention, I also wanted to let you know that I have available on my website this fabulous apron. It is hand stamped with my Van Gogh foam stamp and embellished with gold by me. I've even signed the pocket. It's a denim full length apron with a tie around the back and two great big pockets. It's a great apron for the studio or for a workshop and they make fantastic holiday gifts and you know that season is coming at us like a freight train. So check them out on my website paperpaintings.com slash shop and order yours today and I'll ship it out this week. And in this one I'm going to focus on greens and blue so cool colors i don't think i'm going to use this light green but maybe so greens and blues and black because i want to show you how the black really is bold and bleeds um that may not be your cup of tea especially i wouldn't put that in my pink palette but it's good with darker heavier colors so let's start with the purple and this time i'm going to do sort of what i call like a graffiti so i'm just going to sort of scribble and I'm gonna, this paper is gonna have like a graffiti effect. So again, I need to activate my tip a little bit more. And here, I'm just doing some scribbling. Another fun thing to do with the bullet point is some dots, dabbing dots. And then spray. And this time I'm going to start with just a sheet of paper without the gold spritz on it. And you can see that water activating the paint pen and pulling it through. And here we're getting some beautiful soft line quality with the marker. And I'm going to flip it. I probably won't be able to get anything, but you can really see that softness of the line quality with the indirect mark making. Okay, so my next color is going to be the blue and I'm gonna go sort of vertical so I can go across some of those patterns. And again, I'm just making random. This is my graffiti. I like a little straight line. I like a little spiral. I want a couple of circles, whatever comes to your mind. You can keep it simple or you can make it more complex. Spraying that and press. There, we're getting some really nice soft lines with that. Lots of fun. Really loving the white that comes through in the lines, making them look almost like they were done with a paintbrush. And then um, some of the green. I'm just gonna make some circles with the green. And I'll use the light green as well. And spritz. I love this fine mister. It, it comes out like such a fine mist. It's really nice. Totally different than uh, the pump uh, ch -ch -ch top. <laughs> so now we got green in the mix. Ah, some really nice effects with that green. And then lastly, I'm going to add the black. And the black is, of course, the strongest, darkest color. So I'm going to go easy on that. I'm just going to do like a nice sort of scribble. And then I'm going to sort of do a loose version of my name, my signature, which is unreadable, but is kind of interesting. So if you want to write, you know, really messy, some words. And I'm double spritzing that to get that black to bleed. And I'm putting that in there. And we're now getting a pretty wet piece of paper. 
and pull and look at that. Oh my God, look at the beautiful line quality of that black with the spritz on it. Wow, and how it br contrasts with that bright blue is really nice. So I think I wanna have some black down this edge. So that's when I'm gonna come in here and just do some little stripe marks because I wanna pull some of the pattern out to the edge. And again, I'm gonna spritz that. And print. Ooh, that one got really wet. So here we get some real painterly quality right here in that corner with all that moisture. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry and come back to the first one. And now with all this stuff that's on here, what I like to do is pull a print. So I'm gonna just use some uh, Titan Green Pale because it's a nice light neutral color. And I'm gonna roll that out. And the reason why I'm pulling the print is it's gonna clean my plate basically and give me another sheet of base for collage paper. So I'm just gonna take my sturdy rice paper with the smooth side down. You can feel the smooth side, even if you take it out of the pad and it gets turned over, it's very easy to feel the smooth side. And this should be an interesting, ooh, look at that. And it's also pulling pretty much everything off the plate and there I've got a beautiful cleanup sheet with all my residual marker. How beautiful is that? That's a bonus. Okay. So now uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to take that first sheet with the stripes. And now I'm going to spritz a little bit of the gold over it. Where did the gold go? Here we go. I'm gonna spray just a little bit. I don't wanna do too much, but adding a little bit of, of bling to that now back on top is nice. And don't forget to wipe out the tip of the nozzle. And then what I want to do is to soak some, or to put some color over the whole thing to sort of unify it. So. I've got a previous print here that I did, and you know you can never replicate anything, but I'm trying to remember how I got this green in the background with that pink and blue standing up off of it so nicely. I didn't soak it from the back, so <clears throat> I may have done this. Uh, who knows? I've been working a lot out here, so let's see. All right, so I'm going to take some turquoise phthalo, and that's what it looks like and put that on top. I'm gonna roll that out in a nice thin layer and print that on top. I think that that print that I just showed you, I may have done the marker on top of the paint. We may be getting a whole different effect here. Yes, I just subdued all those colors. It's still cool. It's, it's super watery and would be great for water, but you can see that this is clearly the pink is on top. So we can come back and do that, um, but look at how beautiful that gold spritz came out. So we're getting there. So this one, you can see that I actually did put the marker on top. So let's let this dry a bit and we'll come back to this one, which is still not dry, but... Um, it's okay. So now for this one, I am going to put color over in from the back. So I've got another one that I did with the graffiti effect and I soaked the uh, permanent green light in through the back and then I printed green gold over the top. Now that green gold over the top does darken down the purple. Um, so there may be a way to do both from the back, which would leave our colors more intense. So to get that, um, color from the back, I'm going to use that water bucket and the water, and I'm going to try using it on the gel plate rather than brushing it. So I'm going to grab my phthalo green yellow shade and add it and then take my wet watery brush and brush it 
over the plate. And I wanted to leave sort of some openings in it for the lighter green. So I'm just going to come in here with a paper towel and just kind of blot out some of it so I can have some openings for a two-tone green. Okay, so hopefully that's wet enough and we're going to put it on the back and get it to come through. And this is what I was going for. These droplet effects are beautiful. And we could use a little bit more to come through. So I'm going to do that again, I think, on the lower corner. So I don't want that. I want the permanent green light. And I'm going to put a little bit here. I'm going to put a little bit up there. I'm looking at my print and determining where I want it. And there. And then with a lot of water to get it to soak through. So that's, that's cool. That's starting to look really kind of neat, like graffiti. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. What a cool effect. And actually, I'm going to spritz a little bit of the gold on it, just a little. And I'm not pumping all the way, I'm just dabbing it, and that's giving me these um, droplets more than a bright, uh, fine spray. So you sort of have to play with your sprayer to get that, but I'm not depressing it all the way down. I'm just applying a little pressure because I found that I like the droplets more than the, than the broadcasted mist. So you can see those little droplets that are in there are really cool. And this paper is taking a lot of water. It's damp, but it's still hanging in there. So let's see. Okay. So, and you can see that marker the black is really getting soft because it's probably still bleeding a little bit since the paper is so wet now. Um, but what I love about putting that color in from the back is that you still see the blue and the purple pretty vibrant because the color is from the back. The, um, the difference is when you put the color on the top, it affects all the other colors. You see the difference? So when we soak from the back, we the marker stays the right color. This made everything in a green shade, which isn't bad because like I said, it looks like water. So what I wanna do with this one then is get some of that pink back on there. So I'm gonna wipe this off just, just to get some of that green off. And then I'm gonna come back with my pink The stripes again. And the blue. You can do these at separate times and then you get intersecting and overlapping that you didn't anticipate, which is spontaneous and fun. Or you can do them um, together as I'm doing him them here. And I am going to give that a spritz and put that over this paint color and see if we can bring the bright colors back. There we go. Now we can see the pink. I'm gonna flip it and do it again. And now we can see the pink and the blue. I really like that and I really like the pink. So I'm gonna add some more pink to this whole mix. And I'm gonna look at my print here and see where I would want more pink lines. So I'm sort of curating my marks to the print that I'm working with and make sure it's juicy. So you wanna depress that tip. Okay. And now we're gonna take this print and add the pink. Fantastic, and a second print. Okay, so the difference is putting the marker on top with the paint underneath it. Um, I it, it doesn't, I think it stays more vibrant when you don't spritz it 
if it's going over color or there's a combo you just sort of have to play with it um it's really soft and painterly here though i'm really liking the way that came out and i'm gonna do a, a little bit more of the blue as well no i'm gonna do a little purple why not we're in the blue purple family and it doesn't have to be a lot And we won't spritz that one. We'll just print it directly. You don't have to spritz it. It just gives you a different line quality. So we'll just print that one. And I'm going to flip it and print it again so that I can get a little bit more. Oh, look at that. That's lovely. That's really lovely. And the little bit of gold spritz is really looking good in that one. So what I did in this one, you could leave it like this. It's beautiful just like this. But what I did with this one is I added another layer with a stencil. And this stencil is called chair caning. And I'm going to do that on this one for you. And I went over that with phthalo, uh, turquoise, turquoise phthalo. So I'm going to put out the turquoise phthalo. And then I'm gonna put the chair caning mask, it's actually a mask, into the plate and then I'm going to print. So this is just adding another layer of pattern to this print and it's giving another layer of darkness as we go uh, into a darker color. But the beauty of the translucency of the turquoise phthalo is that you can still see some of the pattern through that. So that is really beautiful. I'm loving that. And I could spritz it uh, with the gold, but I think I'm going to leave it. Um, I'm really happy with that. It's the second one I made. So you can see that neither ever comes out the same. This one's got a little bit more white. Um, and a little bit more gold showing through. So probably a little heavier spritz of gold. Um, I have it less here, but beautiful. Nonetheless, I really, really like that print. And uh, now I'm gonna clean this plate. So I'm gonna pull another ghost print with my rice paper. So let's see, we'll see if we can get this off. Oh, wow, that's so much fun. Look at that. That's awesome. And we've got some residual here left. Uh, I think we'll be okay, though. So the next one is I was inspired by this graffiti print that I made earlier today. And that is what we are going to be doing with this one. So the next effect is there the green gold, which was the lighter color, which is why I dabbed up some of that permanent green light to leave openings for the green gold to come through. So now I'm going to flip this over just so that we don't get that uh, turquoise phthalo um, affecting my green gold because I want this to be light and bright. So green gold is a nice vibrant light yellowy gold. I mean yellowy green. So I'm going to again I'm going to get my wet watery brush and I'm going to put that over here and the thing that's kind of neat about adding that water is it, with green gold is a very thin color so it does different things than the permanent green light did it really beads up because it's already a very thin color so i'm just going to brush this try to get it some of it smoothed out and then print and you can see that beautiful beading up and it's coming through the little openings and that's really looking good I think I have to give it a little bit more coverage here. Where did I put the green gold? Okay. This time I'm gonna brayer it, but it won't soak through just with the brayer. So now I'm gonna spritz it with my fine mist. And before it beads up too much, I'm gonna press and I'm gonna get more of that coming through. So now I've got a really nice, rich two-tone green background. I probably used more of the that medium green than I did in this print. In this print, I had a lot more open spaces. So think about that when you add that medium green is leaving a lot more area for the green gold to come through. I don't really have much area of the green gold coming through. And then I'm going to come back in and again, I'm going to add a little bit more gold. 
And this is like the graffiti print between the splots of gold and the scribbles and the um, multiple colors of the markers. So that's what we've got. So that is a darker uh, version of this one. And it's also going to get a little lighter when it dries. This is dry because I did it earlier and this is soaking wet. So it will get a little uh, lighter when it dries. And then, um, so that's like my graffiti style print, those two. And then we've got this one, which came out slightly different both times. And that's like with the pink and blue stripes and purple stripes, and then the mask over the top as a last layer. And I love how the stripes show through the background and through the mask openings. So that is playing with the Posca acrylic paint markers and the fine mist of water on the gel plate. And then also adding my retrofitted spritz of golden high flow acrylic um, and just changing your pressure on the nozzle to get splatters um, or a fine mist spray. The fine mist spray, because um, gold is slightly opaque. The problem with the broadcast fine mist spray is that it obliterates a lot of your pattern. It just gives you this, this gold sheen across the whole thing. But since we've got two of these, we could try putting a little spritz of gold whoop, on that one too. So here, that's the effect I'm going for. And also, if you think it's too much, you can take another print and put them together and that'll pick up some. But it eliminates your little dot spots, but it'll take, it'll pull it back. So there you go. So some beautiful effects with the Posca paint pens. This one is so wet with so many layers, but we're just building these beautiful layers Layering, layering. Gel printing is all about layers. Well, that's it from here this week. I hope you enjoyed the Posca paint pens on the gel plate as much as I did. I hope you enjoyed the effects and that you know that there are a million different solutions and a million different results that you're going to get from the same process. So I was out there for hours making papers and some of them were fantastic and some of them were medium, mediocre, and some of them were terrible. But there's nothing that a stencil on top cannot save and revive. So don't ever throw a piece of paper away. Just keep adding more layers and layers and layers and ultimately you'll come out with something fantastic. Thanks for being here. Happy Friday and I'll see you back here next week.